At Indigo, our mission is harnessing nature to help farmers sustainably feed the planet. Plants have microbes inside of them, which we often call the microbiome. Those microbes evolved with plants over hundreds of millions of years. And modern agricultural practices have changed the number and types of microbes inside of plants. We've really reduced the beneficial microbes. So once we understand that, we have the opportunity to identify the beneficial microbes that have been removed, add them back to plants, increasing the health of the plant, which means that it yields more, good for the farmer, and needs fewer chemicals, pesticides, etc., cetera, to, uh, to thrive. We've sampled tens of thousands of plants from every continent on the globe except Antarctica, and at every latitude from the equator up to the Arctic. So once we've taken a plant sample, we bring them back to our labs and we take the microbes out of them. We call them isolate the microbes. And then we do DNA sequences on each one of them. So that allows us to describe those microbes in great detail. And then uh, combine that with all the data we gathered when we gathered the sample to be able to predict what microbes might be most beneficial in which situations. We benefit from three trends on the technology side. The first, of course, is the plummeting cost of DNA sequencing. Even two or three years ago, the cost of sequencing would have been too high for Indigo to exist. The second one is the decreasing cost of computing power. And the third is the increased networking that we all experience, and that helps us in gathering samples, in gathering data, in gathering requirements from our customers. So really think of of Indigo as being at the nexus of, of all three of those trends. Almost every modern seed gets coated with something before it gets planted. So usually those things are insecticides or fungicides, things that are intended to keep the seed from getting eaten before it emerges. And so infrastructure already exists to do all of that coating. And really what we're doing is simply adding a new ingredient. You know, we're adding our microbes into that coating. The plant germinates, the seed germinates, the plant emerges, it takes up the microbe inside of the plant and then reproduces. So we're essentially outsourcing the production of the microbes to the plants. The effect we expect to see is healthier plants. And healthier plants yield more or you know, produce more. So uh, we can see signs of that throughout the season and we're seeing it already in, in taller plants, in plants with thicker stems, in plants with more root mass. And that root mass is especially important if you're hoping the plant will will thrive under dry conditions. Ultimately, we expect to see it at harvest uh, in the yield results as well. We're announcing three things this week. We're announcing that we've closed a $100 million Series C financing. So that comes on top of the $56 million we've raised thus far. We're announcing that we've launched our first product in cotton, which is intended to prove the, improve the yield of cotton when grown under water stress. Our second product will be launched in the fall, intended to improve the yield of wheat under water stress conditions. The approach that we're taking to harness nature to improve the health of plants should apply to a whole bunch of stresses. Our initial focus is on water stress, but it should also apply to protecting plants against insects, protecting plants against other infestations which gives the possibility that over time we'll be able to replace many of the chemistries that are used today. I don't know what that time will be, but I think there is a time in the not too distant future where we'll look back on this period where we spread insecticides and fungicides over hundreds of millions of acres and think, you know, thank God we don't have to do that anymore. <laughs>